Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where I'm continuing my flight with the FA-18 around the world and in this video I plan to complete that flight finally. It's been uh, quite a long time. I, I thought I was gonna finish this a lot quicker than I ended up doing. Uh, it in theory could be done in like a day and a little bit more if you stayed up late and you know. But uh, yeah. I picked the fast plane to do this flight for a reason, but it turned out that it took longer than I thought. So, next time I fly around the world, we're going to try something a little bit different and take our time. But anyway, let's get back into the cockpit. We've already started out. We're here at Chicago O'Hare. My plan is to fly down to Dallas and then complete the flight by arriving in at Edwards Air Force Base in California. So, that is the remainder of our trip. And let's get started. Now I've actually already done this, well I didn't finish this leg of the flight. I tried to live stream this uh, particular leg of the flight between Chicago and Dallas and that did not go so well. So in full disclosure, I had my first crash along the this uh, circumnavigation. Uh, but I, I don't take credit for that because it's because somebody asked me to do a barrel roll and I was going Mach 1.7 and that's not a good idea. Why am I wiggling so much? Hmm. Okay, well let's just get off the runway. It really feels like I'm wobbly right now. Yeah, so that was just not a good idea, but when I, I'm enough of a Kerbal that when somebody asks me to do a barrel roll, even though I'm not, I, I have no experience doing barrel rolls really. Okay, okay, um, hold on. I, I get the feeling that recover. Betty needs to be Speed turned down. Recover. Yeah. I'm trying to talk, Betty. Okay, so, yeah. Anyway, it's possible that if uh, the fuel holds out well, we'll just fly over Dallas and continue on to Edwards Air Force Base directly. Depends on the fuel situation. So here we are, departing Chicago. Um, the weather doesn't make it easy to see the skyline right now. Let's reset our GPS. It's thinking that we've got a distance of 5,302 nautical miles from where exactly? Hmm, that's an interesting waypoint. I don't remember programming that in. Okay, well, let's just uh, clear those. I guess we'll go for Love Field. That's good enough. And so that's 692 nautical miles. And Edwards, we can just program in right now. 1,746, I don't think we're gonna make that in one flight. Yeah, that was probably optimistic. I mean, in, I think if we really went a little bit slower than normal and played it careful, it's possible. But I'm not going to do that. For a little while, I think uh, my goal will be to learn the 757 properly and fly a little bit more more according to regs, if you will. Not uh, not my usual crazy flair for the dramatics and general sloppiness. No barrel rolls in the 757, in other words. I do take great delight, however, in flying the 707 inverted once in a while. It, it doesn't hold it very well, by the way, even though uh, it was really done by the test pilot for the 707. Um, that that was a risky maneuver. And it's, uh, I do have a 707 in here, and uh, I did fly it inverted, but it's sure not meant for that. No, no, it's not. It's a dodgy business right there. I still need to work on camera views with this game. There are a lot of settings that uh, could make for some great cinematics, but and just in general the scenery looks wonderful, though there are additional plugins to improve the environment, that is XP environment, uh, Enviro or something like that. Uh, seems to cost a bundle though, but uh, I mean, as it is, I'm quite satisfied with it even, even now. I, I don't, I'm not in any rush to uh, pay money to improve the scenery right now. No, I think I'm quite satisfied. 
Now, as far as uh, getting better frame rates, especially around airports, I've decided to uh, get rid of the parked aircraft at the airport, so I've unchecked that option. I think that will substantially improve the frame rates near airports, so that's one thing. Um, I don't know if there are any other things that I can do to improve it, but I don't want to reduce the quality of the, the view that much, so it's a trade-off. But overall it seems to perform very nicely, it's just, uh, just the airports really. So I'll make that sacrifice even though I liked the parked aircraft. And Mach 1. A little bit of drag there, as per usual. That's why I generally uh, activate autopilot when I'm trying to pass the sound barrier, just so that holds it. And uh, so I don't have to, like, I don't get into some weird oscillation with it. Yeah, as it now stands, uh, it's possible we could have the range to get to Edwards Air Force Base. Um, the range is going up. We're at 1311 on the estimate without the reserve fuel. And the total distance is 1580. But that would require us to do no sightseeing. And I'd like to take a little dip down to take a look around at some point. So probably we're just going to have to refuel. Yep. But we're on track, uh, 32 minutes left, and taking a look at whereabouts we're at, uh, St. Louis is to our right, St. Louis, St. Louis. But there's so much glare around that we really would have to descend in order to really see it, and it's a fair bit out of our way right now. Okay, well, with the glare from the sun being what it is, and the landscape looking as it has been, there hasn't been much opportunity to do any sightseeing, but we are about to begin our descent to Dallas, so hopefully we'll get a good look there. And uh, we're basically passing into Texas up ahead. Okay, we are currently on the outskirts of Dallas, uh, passing through uh, 32,000 feet and descending at 250 knots indicated airspeed. And up ahead uh, around here is Garland. And fortunately, actually there's a bit of a glow up there where I think downtown Dallas roughly is. Well, yeah, we can clearly see downtown Dallas there. The highways all merging together very clearly. Okay, so the highway in front of us is 35 East, it looks like, or at least 35 E. It seems to actually go north south, but it is what it is. We're over DeSoto right now, headed north. So we are headed north into Dallas. You can see the Dallas skyline there, but the buildings unfortunately don't have their night lights on yet. And now we can see traffic on the highway. You can see right there. So, if you are a Dallas resident, let's see if any of these buildings look familiar to you. I don't know what this tower is right up front. Seems distinctive. There's some transparency problems, I think, on at least one of the buildings. They don't look like Autogen to me. Not the stock buildings that come with x -Plane. I think they're unique. It's really nice to see little cars on the roadway. That's really cool. Okay, let's get a quick outside view here. So, uh, right after this, I'll be proceeding on to Edwards Air Force Base. And if we don't do too much sightseeing along the way, I might wait till morning to fly there. 
just so that we don't have to fly at night. But if it turns out that we don't do much sightseeing, whoa, ooh, that was hard. That was harsh. Talking too much. Um, yeah, if we don't do much sightseeing along the way, I'll have a additional surprise at Edwards Air Force Base. It depends on because there is the Grand Canyon and all. That might be fun. So maybe I'll just spend some time in the Grand Canyon instead. Okay, but I need to grab some fuel. And so once I'm refueled and ready to get on my way to Edwards Air Force Base, I'll be right back. Okay, I've decided to wait until morning and I'm getting ready to take off. You see some airplanes around here. Uh, it's not lagging too badly. But certainly the airport does not have a full stock of parked aircraft. So just that one FedEx plane apparently. And I see a couple here. Not bad, but again, not, not your normal compliment. But here we go. On to Edwards Air Force Base. Off we go. So, okay, one more pass of uh, Dallas and then we'll head out. Since it's clear out, we'll take it from higher altitude. Interesting bridge there. Journey to Edwards is a thousand nautical miles. And I do want to take a nice look at the Grand Canyon and possibly Las Vegas on our way. Okay, we are currently at our cruising velocity of Mach 1.7 and our cruising altitude. We're approaching our cruising altitude of 55,000 feet. And currently. Approaching Lubbock, Texas, which I've had occasion to fly over a few times now, though not at this site. We were doing uh, closer in sightseeing, and I think I'm going to give Lubbock the gift of my external fuel tanks. I'm sure there are rules about when you're supposed to dump these. Oh, not all of them went up. Oh. No, they're back. No, that's not right. This plane sometimes with the external fuel tanks. I'm sure there are rules about when you're supposed to dump them and when you're not, but... No? Okay, fine. Let's try that again. Okay, I think they're gone now. So yeah, from 55,000 feet, 51,000 above ground level, there's Lubbock, Texas. Okay, we are now currently over New Mexico and approaching Albuquerque. I think Albuquerque is a little bit up north there to our right. And meanwhile to our left, though uh, very indistinct at this point, perhaps even secret, is White Sands National Monument. And somewhere out there is Alamogordo and a whole bunch of the technical history of the United States, if you will. But I don't think I have photo scenery for all that. I probably should get it for White Sands, though. That would be an interesting place. And certainly the landscape there probably looks a lot more like it does underneath me than the stock scenery that we have over there. We've passed Tuba City in uh, in Arizona and we're approaching where we're gonna pick up the Grand Canyon. You can see it there. And I think I'll just turn to the west now. And we'll follow the Grand Canyon along. 
So we're fairly close to Arizona's border with Utah here. And the landscape is going to be fairly dramatic. Don't know what the name of this is. I think the this ridge is called Cedar Ridge. That much I can tell. Now of course the Grand Canyon at this point is a network of canyons and I'll try and trace out with my flight path the main portion of it. But there are all sorts of branches as tributaries flow into the Colorado River. Yeah, I think this is it. It's pretty obvious. So we'll follow this path here. We're going at 380 knots indicated airspeed, 22,000 feet. And you can see the Colorado River hangs a sort of right and as it does so, it leads to Grand Canyon Village. Though we're not quite at Grand Canyon National Park, this is still Kaibab National Forest, technically. But yeah, let's hang that right towards the west. But overall, the Grand Canyon is quite messy. <laughs> if I had to come up with one unusual word to describe it. It's messy. Okay, we still have to keep track of the river and we can see it winding to our right and then it bends down. Another way to describe the Colorado River is sneaky, because with all these cliff walls, it's sometimes hard to spot exactly where it's going. And the main canyon, the Colorado River, is right below us here. Okay, I think this right here is pretty much the heart of the canyon. The Colorado River cuts this part quite deep. Still, it's uh, done quite a lot to the surrounding terrain as well. Not too sure about the sort of bluish green look to it. I guess it's a seasonal thing. Up ahead we see more traditional colors, the yellow orange that you might expect. Oh, so as far as photo scenery goes, it's tough to get the canyon's unique angles. I mean, to a large extent, they've done a good job. I don't know how the colors work out, though. Okay, we're basically going through the final bit of the Grand Canyon before it hits Lake Mead. And after Lake Mead, we are going to head to Las Vegas for a quick flyby and then on to Edwards. I am doing this flight quite late at night my time. It is past midnight. So if I sound a little bit frowsy, that might be the reason why. As the Colorado River heads into Lake Mead, it gets particularly interesting to try and follow it. You can see it wind its way here. We are currently at 10,000 feet and actually 9,000 feet above ground level but it sort of depends on where ground level is which ground level because it's quite 
changeable. And here's one of those interesting forks you gotta watch out for, but right now it's pretty obvious where the Colorado River is. Let's check out our fuel. Well, we've got, it says 208 nautical miles of range. It's 213 nautical miles to Edwards Air Force Base. I'm uh, really taking it leisurely around the Grand Canyon. But this is a rare time where I'm taking a close look at it. I haven't flown too much around the Grand Canyon in X-Plane 11. And again, of course, this is not the default scenery. This is photo scenery. So any gap in representation, I mean, so far it's looking pretty good as far as I'm concerned, but anything that looks a bit odd is due to the photo scenery and not the default scenery. I doubt the default scenery looks better than this, though. Can't get too much better than that right there. That's an epic view. Okay, so now it's the end of the canyon proper and Lake Mead is coming up. You can see the hilly portion sort of dies down. The river still winds quite a lot. It goes to the north, then it goes to the south. Okay, so here's Lake Mead, though admittedly has some interesting streaks on it that I don't think are correct. Not entirely sure what those streaks are about. I mean, it could be sediment, but they don't look quite right. And we sort of ignore this branch to the north, as long as we continue following the main portion to the west we should hit Las Vegas. In fact, on our GPS we can see Las Vegas up front. And here we are, having followed Lake Mead on down. To the left is the continuation of the Colorado River down to the Gulf of California. But on this leg, we meet Las Vegas. So let me throw it down a bit. And we'll buzz the Las Vegas strip and then continue on. Okay, so this roadway here is the Las Vegas strip. Further to the right is Interstate 15. Well, I don't know all the particular, well, I was going to say peculiar, but, well, same difference, buildings in Las Vegas, but I'm reasonably satisfied by this rendition. And of course, here's the airport. Looking okay. Alright, good enough. Let's head to Edwards. We're really running out of fuel. We're really running out of fuel here. So let me quickly replot this. 149 nautical miles, and it says we have. 124 until we're on reserves. Okay, we are climbing above Spring Mountains. There's also a place called Mountain Springs. But basically, it is the last bit of Nevada before we start to enter California and the Mojave Desert. We're currently flying over the middle of the Mojave Desert. This is Fort Irwin Military Reservation. 
in front of us and a little bit further along is China Lake Naval Weapons Center and then beyond that basically is Edwards Air Force Base. Currently it's saying I have 46 nautical miles of range, 7 minutes left uh, with not including the reserve fuel and we've got 77 nautical miles to go but since I've got the potential energy gain from climbing to 30,000 feet all I really have to do is pitch down a little bit more and my range should increase I could also decelerate a tad and very soon that range will be creeping up past the 74 nautical miles that we need taking a look at our choice of runways I think I'll just fly straight in no point complicating things at this time of night there are so many runways to choose from technically the little icon in the GPS doesn't really give an accurate representation of where Edwards is because Edwards is so darn big okay so I'm gonna go for four left I think if I can spot it it's some of these runways are a little bit difficult to spot well no more we are in reserve fuel which is fine we've got two thousand pounds of it we might as well use some of it close though we came close it's the approach marker I think this one was used by the space shuttle let me try and make a better landing here than I did at Dallas Well, it is what it is. Alright, so completed the flight around the world. Edwards to Edwards flying westward. A hiccup here and there along the way, but nothing too bad. Just a little bit of showboating in a really bad ill-advised way but when you're in a jet fighter such things happen okay so as I taxi here I hope you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy the video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time